Hate Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense, we continue our physiology playlist and let's talk about the sympathetic nervous system, fight, flight, fright. Don't forget that your adrenal medulla can secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine, however, your sympathetic nerve endings can only secrete norepinephrine. With that said, now let's get started. As you know, the structural unit of the nervous system is the neuron, with its beautiful soma and long axon. It could be as long as one meter. A collection of somas in the central nervous system is known as a nucleus, but a collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system is a ganglion. A collection of axons in the CNS, a tract, but in the PNS is a nerve. The neuron is the structural unit. What is the functional unit? The reflex arc. Sensory, stimulus, then a receptor, an afferent, a center, efferent, effector organ. You touch the stove and then you pull your hands away. What kind of fibers are these? These are A fibers. It has to be the best because this is important for survival. What's a ganglion again? A collection of somas in the peripheral nervous system. Look at this. This is peripheral nervous system. It's outside of the central. It's outside of the spinal cord. We call this the dorsal root ganglion. What's the function? It is sensory because it's behind the line. As we have discussed before, look at the autonomic ganglia on the other hand. Autonomic nervous system is always motor and never sensory. The ganglia of the sympathetic nervous system are either lateral or collateral, paravertebral or prevertebral. By the way, these are located in the midline here. I just didn't have a space to draw all of this. Ganglia of the parasympathetic nervous system, on the other hand, are terminal ganglia embedded within the wall of the target organ or other ganglia, such as ciliary ganglia, submandibular, sphenopalatine and otic. Anything behind this line is sensory, that's why the dorsal root ganglia is sensory. However, look at the lateral horn cell, it's here. What's the function? Autonomic nervous system. What's the autonomic? It's always motor and that's why it's in front of the line. Consider the somatic motor, where does it start? At the anterior horn cell. It's also motor, that's why it's in front of the line. The brain is also part of the central nervous system, that's why there is a line here. Anything in front is motor, anything behind is sensory. This is sensory, these two are motor. Autonomic nervous system is always motor and never sensory. Today's topic is the sympathetic nervous system. In order to understand it, imagine that you are running from a tiger. Look at this tiger, I'm more autistic than artistic. Sympathetic is fight, flight, fright. I'm running for my life. Parasympathetic nervous system, which will be discussed in the next video, on the other hand, is not fight flight, it's rest and digest, read and take a dump. So imagine that you are sitting on a toilet, eating a sandwich while reading a book. You're constricting your pupil, accommodating your lens and relaxing your internal sphincters. What's a ganglia? A collection of neurons in the peripheral nervous system. Here is a somatic sensory ganglia. Here is an autonomic ganglia. Anything before it is called preganglionic autonomic fiber, after it postganglionic autonomic fiber. And as you know, somatic fibers do not relay in ganglia because we do not have time to waste. Moreover, since we do not have time to waste, give the somatic motor fibers the fastest types of fibers ever, A-alpha. However, autonomic, we can wait. Preganglionic will take B, postganglionic will take a C type fiber. B fibers are myelinated, C fibers are unmyelinated. Myelin appears white. That's why B type fibers or preganglionic fibers are also known as the white ramus communicans. However, C type unmyelinated appear gray and they are called gray ramus communicans. Ganglion, structure, a collection of somas outside the central nervous system. Function, a distribution center, a relay station for regulation. One preganglionic fiber will come in, about 8 to 15 postganglionic fibers will come out. Preganglionic fibers, where are their cell bodies? Their cell bodies are here in the lateral horn cells. And they contain what? Acetylcholine. They secrete what? Acetylcholine. What's the name of these fibers? Cholinergic fibers. Tell me about the postganglionic. Where is where's the cell body? The cell body is located in the ganglion. What's the definition of a ganglion? A collection of cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system. They contain what? It depends. If you are a sympathetic nervous system, you'll secrete norepinephrine. Epinephrine is adrenaline. 
and norepinephrine is noradrenaline. That's why we call these fibers adrenergic fibers. However, if you are parasympathetic postganglionic autonomic fiber, you will secrete acetylcholine, and that's why we call you a cholinergic fiber. Where does the sympathetic nervous system originate? It's thoracolumbar from the thoracic spinal cord and one, two, or one, two, and three lumbar spinal segments. How about the parasympathetic? It's craniosacral. You have cranial nerves, only four, and the mnemonic is 1973, three, seven, nine, and 10. How about the sacral? You have the beautiful pelvic nerve or pelvic splanchnic nerve. It's craniosacral. Sympathetic thoracolumbar. So I get the origin. The origin is thoracolumbar. Where do they relay? They relay in ganglia. What types? We have two groups. We have the paravertebral on both sides and we have the prevertebral in front of the spinal cord. Pre means in front, anterior to. These are called lateral, but these are called collateral. The main one is the pilot. The next is the co-pilot. So let's say the sympathetic nervous system wants to supply the heart. Sure, thoracolumbar, baby, get you a thoracic segment and then leave, relay in a ganglia, then your postganglionic fiber is gonna reach the heart. Beautiful. Now I understand the lateral or paravertebral ganglia. How about the prevertebral or collateral? Oh, this is only for abdomen pelvis. This is only for gastrointestinal tract. And the nerve segments will actually follow the blood vessel. What was the vessel of the foregut? Celiac trunk. What was the blood vessel of the midgut? Superior mesenteric artery. Hindgut? Inferior mesenteric artery. And that's why sympathetic collateral ganglia include celiac ganglion, superior mesenteric ganglion, inferior mesenteric ganglion. So, sympathetic fibers, let's supply the stomach. All right, sure, I'll leave here. Will you relay in this lateral ganglia? Shut up, I will go to the celiac ganglion. Why? Because I wanna go to the stomach, and the stomach is in the foregut. Get your head out of your pyloric sphincter. Then the postganglionic fibers will be embedded inside the wall of the celiac artery. What is that? So here is your beautiful celiac artery. Here is the wall, okay? and another wall, and it's like a cross-section in the in the vessel, okay. Where are the sympathetic postganglionic fibers? They are running inside the vessel. Ooh, inside the wall of the celiac trunk. Why is this? Let me tell you. What does your stomach secrete? Acid. Okay, we're trying to pierce the stomach as few times as possible, because if we pierce your stomach too much, it will secrete tons of acid to the outside and your acid will actually digest your peritoneum. It will burn it. So try not to pierce your stomach too much. I'll only pierce it once. And in this one piercing, I'll include both the blood supply and the sympathetic supply. Genius. And that's why we have collateral ganglia in the first place. We could have just have all of them lateral. Why do you need collateral? Because we need some postganglionic fibers to be embedded within the wall of the vessels in order to pierce your GI tract as few times as humanly possible. And that's the difference between paravertebral and prevertebral. Prevertebral only for abdomen and pelvis, paravertebral for everything else. How many preganglionic sympathetic fibers do we have? Only 15 or 14 in some textbooks. Some textbook will count only number one and number two, other textbook will say number one, two, and three. Who cares? Another note, the sympathetic nervous system supply to the abdomen is called the greater splanchnic nerve, the greater splanchnic is sympathetic, whereas the sympathetic supply to the pelvis is called the lesser splanchnic nerve, also sympathetic. So greater splanchnic and lesser splanchnic are sympathetic fibers. However, pelvic nerve or pelvic splanchnic nerve is parasympathetic. Now let's run from a tiger and stimulate our fight-flight mechanism or sympathetic nervous system. Okay, do you think sympathetic is catabolic or anabolic? Let's think about it. If I'm running from a tiger, I need glucose. Yeah, it's a source of energy. I need amino acids and I need glycerol and free fatty acid. All of these are sources of energy, especially glucose. Therefore, I want to be catabolic. I want to break down the big glycogen into teeny, teeny, tiny bits of glucose so that I can burn them in glycolysis and get me some beautiful ATP so that I can run for my life. Therefore, sympathetic is catabolic. The sympathetic response is a catabolic response. Break down the glycogen into glucose, called glycogenolysis. Break down your lipid into free fatty acid, called lipolysis. 
glucose plus free fatty acid these are sources of energy burn them in the presence of oxygen and you get you energy who's gonna supply the energy to all of our cells your heart your cardiovascular system therefore sympathetic needs to increase heart rate increase cardiac contractility and vasoconstrict your vessels why number one to raise your blood pressure because you're running from a tiger and to reduce bleeding let's say that while running from a tiger you hit a branch of a tree and then you cut the dorsum of your hand do you want to bleed in this moment shut up no so you better constrict your blood vessels this will raise your blood pressure to improve perfusion to vital organs such as your heart and your brain this gives you energy energy gives you work and heat sympathetic is a catabolic system sympathetic will vasoconstrict all of your vessels except coronary vessels which makes sense i want my blood to supply my heart that's why i need to dilate my coronary vessels also sympathetic will dilate my skeletal muscle blood vessels oh i'm running from a tiger my quadriceps needs a profuse robust amount of blood medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about sympathetic response think that you're running from a tiger or in a boxing match and you will understand everything okay what do you want my muscles your muscles need to contract therefore we need to increase blood supply to your muscles therefore i will dilate skeletal muscle blood vessels what should happen to your lungs i'm running from a tiger i need to bronchodilate so that i can breathe in <gasps> faster and deeper next what should happen to your heart increase all cardiac properties including heart rate and stroke volume so that i can pump more blood to your brain and to your muscles what should happen to your eye i need to elevate my upper eyelid so that i can see better i can widen my visual field I should dilate my pupil to see better and I need to protrude my eyeball forwards called exophthalmos also to see better and to see more stuff. What is the effect of the sympathetic nervous system on your adrenal medulla? It should secrete lots of epinephrine and norepinephrine to increase your heart rate and stroke volume and to constrict your vessels and raise your blood pressure. Kidney should secrete renin. Renin will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. ACE will convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two main functions. Number one, to constrict your vessels and raise your blood pressure. The second function is salt water retention to raise your blood pressure. While running from a tiger, do you want to have an erection? Oh, how embarrassing. No, I want to shrink and shoot, but not while running from a tiger. What's the effect of the sympathetic nervous system? on the spleen the spleen is a storage organ of blood it has tons of blood in it. it has red blood cells white blood cells and platelets we want to squeeze the spleen so that it can eject tons of blood into the system increasing your hematocrit value or packed cell volume why do you want to increase hematocrit value um, you want to supply the heart and the muscle and everything else right oh, yeah you want to give them oxygen yeah and red blood cells actually carry oxygen oh i get it here is a question to ask your professor. Professor, give me an example of a nerve that can raise your hematocrit value. Hey son, have you lost your mind? Are you drunk or something? No, I'm not drunk. I'm educated. The greater splanchnic nerve, sympathetic, can actually contract the spleen, squeeze the blood out of it, especially red blood cells, raising my packed cell volume. And that's a nerve that can raise the hematocrit. Oh, I've never heard of that. Good, now you know. Effect of sympathetic on your urinary bladder. Do you want to urinate while running from a tiger? Shut up. So relax the wall and constrict the sphincter. Which sphincter? The internal, because the internal is involuntary. It's controlled by autonomic nervous system. However, the external is somatic. So the only one that can be controlled by the sympathetic is the internal. It will be contracted so that you do not leak urine while running from a tiger. Do you want to digest food while running from a tiger? Who cares about my GI? I want to preserve blood to give it to vital organs such as heart and muscles. Therefore, shut it down, relax the wall, constrict the sphincter. Here's the idea of the hematocrit. Your blood has plasma and red blood cells. Red blood cells about 45% of the total blood volume. This is called the hematocrit value. Hematocrit is about 45%. When the sympathetic contracts the spleen and squeezes blood out, hematocrit will be higher than 45 percent packed cell volume is the same thing as hematocrit value it's value not volume 
The sympathetic is trying to shunt blood away from skin and GI. Who cares about skin and GI right now? And towards brain, heart, and skeletal muscles. So we constrict the vessels in the skin and GI, but we dilate the vessels in the heart and skeletal muscles. These organs have sympathetic supply, but no parasympathetic supply. And this is the answer to the second question. Why do we have more sympathetic nerves than parasympathetic ones? Because some organs are not supplied by the parasympathetic. Duh. In the next video, I'll tell you more about the sympathetic nervous system. And in the video that comes after that, we'll talk about parasympathetic nervous system, the anabolic, the craniosacral, the rest and digest, the secretomotor. And here is the question of the day. Previous questions are in previous videos in this playlist called Physiology. Regarding the greater splanchnic nerve, each of the following is true except... What's the answer? Let me know in the comment section. You will find the correct answer in the next video. If you like autonomic physiology, make it complete by studying autonomic pharmacology. I have a course on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. has 15 videos, 20 cases, Perfectionalist Ultimate Notebook and Mind Map. Download it today. A doctor who does not know pharmacology is like a mechanic who doesn't know about cars. So get a 50% discount towards my autonomic pharmacology course. Use promo code HALF at checkout. Only two discounts left. Medicosisperfectionalist.com Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses and get a 50% discount with promo code HAVE. I'll see you in the next video. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.